G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another software engineering video. Lesson number six, input command and casting. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna look at finally, how do you ask the user to enter something in and we remember it? But also, how do you convert between different data types in our variables? So if you don't know what I mean by data types, go back to lesson number four, have a look at the variables and data types video there. So it is about time that we got stuck into it and start allowing the user to enter in values because what's the point of a program if the user can't interact with your application? Well, that would just be a script that runs in the background with no interaction whatsoever. That's often boring. You can't play a video game if there's no interaction like clicking, uh, choosing your character's name, things like that. So let's look at the input command. It is very, very straightforward, okay? In this example on line number one, I'm simply writing the input command with a message and I'm storing it inside a variable called name. We then do a print with our F string that I introduced again in the variables video and we print hello with the value of that variable. So hello, whatever they typed in. In this case, it's sort of just like a back and forth. So let's jump into the code. Now, one quick issue I've had in the past where students have made a script, they've saved it and they've called it input dot pi. Now, if you name your script the same as a command in Python, Python will get confused and it won't know the difference between the name of your script and the actual input command. So don't do that, okay? I tend to try and main, name mine slightly different. So inputs and I put video after it because I'm making a video. So let's type in the code we had before. Name equals input, all lowercase, with a message for the user. What's your name? Question mark. And I always look to put a space afterwards because that space will just mean that when they type something in, there is a gap between the question mark and whatever they start typing. Then we print with an F string. Hello, Curly's name. Okay, let's hit play. Let's see what it does. Okay, what's your name? As you can see, it's just frozen here on the screen waiting for me to type something in. So I'll type Dingle, hit enter, and then it simply echoes hello, and then whatever I've typed in. That does mean you can type in whatever you would like, okay? It's simply going to store whatever is typed in in that command. So how the hell does this work? Well, let's quickly break it down into three pieces. Now, I know this is out of order, but I've tried to show you what's happening on that first line of code in the order that Python will look at things. So the first thing it does is it finds that input command and it goes, oh, I've got to do something. In the case of print, it takes the message and puts it on the screen. With the case of input, it takes the message, puts it on the screen, then pauses your application, okay? What it does then is it's paused until the user types in the enter key. So when the user presses enter, whatever the type in is now stored inside of whatever variable you have on the left-hand side. So if you forget, if you're using input for whatever reason, like so, and you forget to put a variable on the left-hand side, that line of code will still work. But what you type or what the user types in is not being stored anywhere, and thus it will not work. So if I run this program here, actually let's type that down for a second. Okay, press play, what's your name? I'll do dog man again, why not? What's your age? So it's, see, it still works, but it doesn't remember what I typed in and I can't use it anywhere if I don't remember it. So in this case, if I want to remember their age, I have to put something equals, again, on the left-hand side of input. Remember your order when it comes to the assignment operator. Okay, so variable equals, you're old, for, and then I'll put age. Now I'm missing something here. See how it's blue and not gold, like, gold, purple, like this one up here. See if you can figure out what it is. It is... I didn't put an F in the front. Okay. What's your name? Dog man. What's your age? 10. You're old for 10. Simple as that. Okay. So the input command is where things start to get interesting. What You can start having menus. You can start making a calculator. You can do a guessing game. You can do a horoscope. You know, when were you born? Uh, what's your, what's the word I'm looking for here for horoscopes? 
star sign. That's the word I'm looking for. And then you can do all sorts of really cool things because you've now got a bit of interaction. You can even make a really crappy uh, chat bot. Like, how are you feeling today? They type in sad. Oh, you're sad. That's no good. Da 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 da. Now, obviously, you can make that more powerful later on with thing called if statements. But this is where things start to get a bit interesting. So have a look at this code for me and see if you can figure out what this code will do. Pause the video. Let's move on. Hey, hopefully you got it right or wrong. So we have a bit of a problem though. When you use the input command, every variable that you make or assign a value to will be a string, okay, by default, because that's the behavior of input. Input always produces a string result. So that means when I typed in your name, name becomes a string. That's fine because that's what we want. Names are made of letters. Okay, so they should be a string. Now input for age would also produce a string. Okay, in this case it works because we're not doing anything like maths. We're not trying to figure out, you know, how old they are or things like that. And we'll do that in a second. Uh, but you can't perform maths on a string. Okay, arithmetic operators work very different for strings than they do for integers. And have a look at this code here. Number equals input give me a number. Number two equals input, give me a second number. And then answer equals number plus number two, print the answer and have a look at the result we get. I type in one for number, two for number two, and then answer becomes 12. Well, actually it's not 12, it's one, two, because again, it's a string. And when you do a plus in a string, it's not adding, it's what you call concatenate. And concatenate is a very complex word for put them together, okay? put the left hand side with the right hand side, make them one. All right. And in this case, it produces this 12 result, which is obviously wrong. So how do we get around that problem? Well, we use a thing called casting or converting, depending on which one you want. So you have to remember this. You have to put this into your head. Whenever you use input, it returns a string. And there's no way around that. You just have to do something afterwards or during to make sure it comes out as the correct data type. If you want an integer, you've got to convert it to an int. If you want to float, you've got to convert that to a float, all that kind of stuff. So how do we do that? Well, we use these lovely things called type functions. Now there are four main ones. There are obviously once again, a lot more, but we use these four here to either convert or check what data type our variables are. If we use what's called the type function, you literally use the word type, that's a command and then you put a variable in the brackets, it will tell you what data type it is. So for example, if we jump back to here and let's print type uh, name, like so. By the way, you don't need all these spaces. I just put them in there because they're a bit easier to read for people. If I hit play and it says, what's your name, dog man? You can see it says class str. Well, str is short for string. Don't worry about the class bit. It's just telling us it's a string. Simple as that. And if I do the same thing for down here, type age, okay, dogman 10, you can see that it is still a string. Age is still a string, okay? I know you probably believed me before, but I wanted to re-emphasize it. Anyway, so how do we get around that? Well, we can convert it between different data types using these converters. So str, the string obviously, We'll take whatever variable we've got and attempt to convert that into a string. So if you look at this example, I've said a is equal to 10, str 10, so the result would be once again 10, but you can see I've got quotes around it to indicate it's actually a word in this case. Now integers, okay? If you want to convert anything into an integer, you use the int function, just being the shorter version of the word int. So if I do a equals 3.14, which would create a float, and I do int a, it will convert it down to three because remembering integers are only whole numbers in this case. Same thing for floats. If I create a string that equals 3.5 and I use the float function, it will convert it to a proper floating point number. So in this case, 3.5. So let's change up my code a little bit here. Instead of asking them, let's get rid of this bit. We don't care about that anymore. Instead of asking what's their age, I'm going to ask them, what year were you born? All right. And so we'll change this to year, like so. 
All right. And then what I want to do is I want to calculate how old they are. And the easiest way to do that realistically is to take the year you're in, okay, and then subtract what year they were born. And that will tell you how old they are. So let's give this a go. All right. So we've got year. We are calculating it by subtracting this year, 2023, by the year they were born. And that should give us the age. You are that years old. All right, and I'll leave this print type down here because I think it's good to have it for later. Press play. I am still Dogman. What year were you born? I was born in the year 2000, believe it or not. Don't believe it. And then I got this big, fat error. And this is another reason why typecasting is very important. I have got an integer just here. 2023 is an int. And then I'm trying to subtract a string. Python does not like that. It doesn't understand how do you subtract a number and a word? That's basically like saying 10 take away dog. That doesn't make any sense. So let's use our int cast. Okay, let's take our year and let's cast it into an int. Now you can put this in all sorts of places. Okay, I've seen most of the time I will put int in front of the word input because what it will do is it'll take care of whatever input is, it'll convert that to an integer and then store that in year. And if I put a mouse over it, you'll see it's now an integer because Python understands that when you want to convert something, that's the data type you're going to use for your variable. Okay. And now because it's an integer, I'll run our code, dog man. Okay. 2000. I am 23 years old and it is now an integer variable type. Now you can put it here before input. You could put it down here inside our little calculator, okay? You could even put it on a separate line like that. Any one of those ways will work. They all have sort of goods and bads. The goods about putting it up here inside the input is that the variable data type is set right at the beginning. And Visual Studio can tell me what data type it is from the beginning, okay? The second one here, so in this second method here, if let's say, for example, I don't have the cast function at the top, well, that means it's initially a string. Then it gets changed into an integer. Now, good thing is Visual Studio is smart enough to know that that has to be converted to an integer. So on this line, it's a string, but this one is actually an integer. The problem is you're adding an extra step, okay? You're creating a variable, it's gonna be a string. Then you're asking Python to change that into an integer. There's actually extra steps in the background there. Why don't you just put it up here on line four to make it simpler for Python? Okay, so that is one thing to note. Now, using int down here has its goods and bads as well. The good is obviously it's making an integer. It can do the maths and it does it easy for me. But what you'll notice if I run the code now, it stays as a string. It can do the calculation because for that one moment in time, it was an integer, but I'm not storing the integer version in itself. So for example, when I did year equals int year, what I'm actually doing there is storing the new version of year over the top of the old one. So it replaces it. But with this one down here, I'm not doing that. I'm just using it in a calculation. So thus it stays as a string, okay? Maybe you do wanna do that. Maybe you wanna keep it as a string, but only momentarily use it as an integer, okay? So it's really important to know where you want to cast. Personally, if I'm going to collect a number from the user, just put it up here inside the input function because why not? It keeps it simple. It means I know what data type is coming out of that input. It's easy to do. Okay, moving along. There's a quick example for you. When I make three variables, I use the type function there just to see what kind of type it is. I've got, once again, using the input, you can see I'm converting it on line three because I'm just showing you an example there of how you can use that in function. And now I can do maths on it, which is lovely. And here is the first program fixed. And you can see I use the int, I've got an extra space there, that's gonna hurt me. And when I do it now with one and two, because I do the int functions, I cast them into integers, then thankfully it produces the correct result. And guess what everybody? That leads us to the end of the video. Have a play around. Use the other casting functions 
as well. And in the next video, we're going to use it a lot more. So I'll see you in the next one.